All right, so with these jumps, stole these from Austin Yoakum. Uh, quick hops over the hurdle, focusing on quick ground, ta ground contact time, uh, then the dunk. Using this ball just because it's a little quieter here in the morning. Um, so, hop, 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 dunk. And we're going to do some broad jumps into dunks as well. So, kind of a little my own spin on it, just give the dunk, give you some a target to jump up. Again, that object to go get to help you jump higher. But again, we're fo focusing on quick ground contact times with the uh, small hurdle hops. Same with the broad jump. We're going to broad jump. Well, broad jump directly into a dunk. So that longer ground contact time on the broad, the first jump. But as soon as we hit the ground, we're gonna jump up and dunk. So it's that kind of a broad jump to a vertical jump there. So Plus, they're more fun than just regular jumping. All right, then we raised the uh, the rim here and uh, just uh, repeated it. Get did the uh, the hurdle, the short hurdle hops again. Quick ground contacts, trying to explode up, and then just adding the dunk at the end of it to uh, work on it. Add some different variations, going sideways here. Get a little, get a little bit more creative. Just a little bit more variation in our jumps uh, as well. Just change things up make things fun again focusing on those quick ground contacts hot ground contact times sorry uh laterally there right into the dunk and broad jumps again make sure you're doing dunk with both hands make sure you use you're able to do that i'm not as good left-handed because i'm a right-handed person so left-handed oh yeah maybe those ones weren't crazy rims i can't even tell the hoop's so crooked but um, I did raise the rim up to nine feet uh, and then again continue the same thing hurdle hurdle hops and then broad jump right into explosive dunks then we threw in some 360 jumps just uh, just to have a little bit more fun a little bit more creativity uh, just working on that rotating in the air uh, then hang uh, power snatch uh, or power clean sorry haven't been doing these a lot. Uh, wrist has been bothering me, shoulders been bothering me, so getting back into it, light, very light, and working on quickness there. All right, so we just finished up our cleans outside. Camera's all messed up and crooked. Uh, back in here, we're gonna hit bell swap, work up to three rep max today. We're gonna pair in some, I think, uh, Yoakum calls them spinal jump ropes, so it's kind of like a squatted uh, spinal wave. Uh, so uh, I've done it before. I like them a lot. So I like to again pair a heavy movement and then just rather than just sit around and I get bored just resting. Uh, so I like to do something spine or hips. Uh, two areas of mine that have always been tight and I uh, just like to move them more. So get a little bit more movement with within our rest period. So working up to a heavy set of three here on the belt squat and put those uh, spinal twists in between. It's another problem with this thing, it's like kind of a pain to get into. Again, three rep max is not necessarily my three rep max all time. It's just that three rep max for the day. It's a good way to kind of auto-regulate. 
and just uh, make sure you're you're pushing yourself each day because some days you're gonna have it, some days you're not. That's the whole thing about it. Um, so maybe, for example, maybe this feels uh, a 45 on each side feels like 145 on each side, and you're just not able to move it very well. So again, it's adjusting feeling auto regulating how you're doing that day that's why i like that um the three rep max for the day who knows maybe it is a pr and that's why i like to do different lifts as well like variation different variation of a squat or different variation of deadlift or bench press or push up or whatever because that allows you to not necessarily know what you're able to do rather than oh i know my bench or i know my back squat is 300 so I'm gonna get close to that. Then you're always thinking of that. Uh, oh, and then you kind of get defeated if you don't get it. Whereas if you're changing, doing different variations, you're not actually sure what your like max is for that or that rep range. It gives you something new. It's kind of that whole PR daily type thing where you're setting a new PR each time you do it. So uh, that's one another reason I like to do it. But there's a million different ways you can uh, set up reps and sets and things like that. It's just finding what works for you, changing it up so you don't get bored, don't get stale. Uh, yes, be consistent with your training, but a squat is a squat. You can do different variations, change up the load a little bit, change up front squat, back squat, belt squat, whatever it is. There's millions of different variations of each movement, but you don't have to do the same exact movement over and over and over and over again. If you're trying to get good at a back squat or a bench press, yeah, then you're probably gonna wanna do a lot of that. But I just want to be strong in my legs, powerful in my legs. So that's why I do different variations of squats. I'm not trying to be a great back squatter uh, or a great uh, front squatter. So I'm not going to do those every single time. If you want to do those, that's totally fine. Again, training is a sandbox. It is a blank canvas for you to figure out what works best for you. Now, if you work with a coach, for, that coach should be helping you figure out what works best for you. Uh, not just throwing everything they want to do on you again. So I'll get back at it here. Spinalize. So get down in a squat and you're just going to kind of rotate the side. And it really doesn't matter. What the kind of shape is or the direction you're moving your spine it's that you're moving it our spines are made to move as you can see mine's not very good because i spent so many years not moving it just doing the basic being sucked into those fear mongers like Stu McGill and those guys that try to tell you not to move your spine, that you're supposed to brace your core and your spine's there for anti-rotation. Yes, that's part of it, but the spine bends in every direction. So utilize it. You probably have back pain because you're not doing a lot of that. Uh, yes, it might hurt to start. So start where you are. Meet yourself where you're at. And move, start gradually. Maybe it's you start here. And then eventually you're getting here. And then there, and there, and there, and there. Bend forward, side to side, back. Use it all, utilize it all because movement is medicine. Movement is gonna help you feel better, it's gonna help you move better, and it's gonna help you get rid of a lot of those nagging aches and pains that are just there from doing nothing and doing constant bent or compressive lifts like back squatting and stuff like that. It's just always compressing your spine where uh, instead you can move it. Yes, you can back squat, that's totally fine. But mix in some of that expansive stuff, that stuff where you're actually moving your spine and sprinting and jumping, that stuff that's not 
just load bearing on the back. So uh, we're gonna get back to it. Not much talking as we go through the rest. Uh, we'll, but uh, we'll work up here and keep going. So let me just start working our way on up to a heavy three rep max for the day. Again, you can do this in smaller increments. You're gonna get more reps then, or you can do a larger jumps. And then once you start getting to the top end, you can uh, smaller increments, that's typically what you're gonna do anyway, um, to get more more reps at the top, top end range. Uh, or you could go up to that three rep max, uh, take 20, 15, 25% off, do drop sets that way, as many reps as possible, or just a certain number of sets. There are endless amounts of, of ways you can program sets and reps. Uh, I like the three rep max, it's, or like the working up to a rep max for the day. Um, and then usually uh, a lot of times I'll do drop sets. I'll probably be doing that on the next in the coming weeks. I'm just getting back into uh, it again after kind of a, a, a lower week. Um, and then we went into uh, our RDLs. So we did the old, uh, again, Jake Tura, eight by five for these. So hit eight sets of five reps. That's 40 reps, uh, minute rest in between. Really feel a pump in the hamstrings on those. I like the, the eight by five for the uh, RDLs is one of my favorites. Uh, then uh, hit our lunges. We went the uh, eight point vector uh, lunge, kind of just going in eight different ways uh, on each leg. So we do a, a round, kind of like you're going around the clock. I'm um, just stepping in each of the eight uh, points, getting different v variety and just moving the legs in different ways rather than just a typical lunge, which would be forward or backwards. You go in kind of that curtsy position, you're going diagonally, uh, reverse, uh, eight different spots. So another different way to change up your lunges and get a little bit more variation in your movement because I think variation is good because we're going to hit a lot of different variations of movement and different types of movement throughout our everyday life and just even if you're not a competitive athlete anymore so uh, this is a good way to do it kind of that whole philosophy on every rep different uh with with the lunges here so did a couple sets of those and then we just finished up with a hanging uh, hip flexor raise so just alternating legs working on driving that hip flexor up hold it for a slight second and then uh, extend down. You could also do this with a band, uh, which I probably should have done, uh, just to get a little bit more, more attention. Or even if you have a kettlebell, hook that onto your, your foot. Uh, you can do it that way. So um, that's just what we did. That was the day. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. If you got any questions, let me know. And we will talk to you again soon, guys. Thanks for watching.